So my name is Joel Bergner. I am a street artist, mural artist, educator, and I organize social action projects. I always was really into art, and I also was always very into community work. So I worked with the mentally ill, the homeless, I worked with foster youth, and I worked for a long time as a counselor in a treatment center. That was all separate though. I did my art and I did my social work. Then I slowly began to figure out ways where I could bring those two together, my two passions together, and do these projects that involve public art and community work. <laughs> project with the Syrian refugees, it was in a huge camp, which has been in the news a lot, called Zatari. And Zatari has become the second largest camp in the world with 120,000 people in it. And it's only been around about a year. It just swelled in numbers because there's so many people escaping across the border into Jordan from Syria. camp is just a drab, depressing place that's just people don't like to be there. They're used to being from their region of Syria, which is very green and beautiful and has running rivers. First of all, we want to just liven up the place and bring some color, get the kids involved so that they have something to do. There's a lot of frustration. A lot of youth are revolting because they're very frustrated with their lives. <laughs> a way for people there in the camp to tell the world, look, this is what's going on, this is our plight, in a positive way. Because most of the news stories about refugees are usually negative. And we focus on a couple main things. One was just kind of basic education about issues that are important in the camp, such as hygiene, sanitation, clean water, things that are going to prevent disease from spreading. So they would teach the kids and the teenagers about these issues. Then we would take that new knowledge and create murals that educated the rest of the community about that. And then we also wanted to really explore the plight of refugees and how they were feeling. Obviously, people really miss their homes. There was a lot of pain going on because of that, and obviously because they had suffered seeing family members die. And so we wanted to make it therapeutic as well. On one mural, everyone from the community came and wrote their hopes and dreams for the future of their country and of their families. So everyone got a chance to put their message in the mural. These guys are what we call the, the uh, wheelbarrow boys. And what they do in the camp, this camp uh, is run by the United Nations um, and the government of Jordan. And the government of Jordan does not want Syrians, even though they come over to their country, they allow them to come to the country, they don't want them to be part of the economy. And they don't want them to have jobs and sell things. And of course, the Syrians want to do that. So what do they do? They end up smuggling all these different products into the camp. So you have this big marketplace in the camp with, you can find like ice cream machines and you can find um, people selling clothes and people selling electronics and people selling like cell phones, everything. And it's all smuggled in by boys like this who take their wheelbarrows and go out of the camp and go across, there's a, a deserty area, there's some soldiers that sometimes won't let them go and sometimes they do get to go. And then they get products from Jordanians that, that's, that give it to them and then they smuggle it in. So it's this whole operation that goes on. And it's very dangerous. Uh, for these kids. Here's, so one of the things they really like to do besides paint the murals is paint their wheelbarrows. It's actually their favorite thing to do. They wanted to do that more than the murals. Um, they all had their own personal wheelbarrow and this was their livelihood and they wanted to make them colorful. We had stencils, we had spray paint, we had ac acrylic paint and we all helped them to decorate their, their wheelbarrows. Now we're gonna go to Kenya. And this project was uh, in the beginning of 2013 it's a couple months before the presidential elections, and everyone was really scared that there would be rioting and a lot of killing because in the previous election, that's what had happened. We are learning through a series of workshops about peace building and uh, violence prevention specifically related to this election period that we're in right now. So there's a series of murals that we're doing all around Kibera that highlight what the kids have learned and the messages that they want to put out to society. This is very powerful because generally children and, and youth do not have a voice in society and specifically when they're from a marginalized community like Kibera. So through the artwork, they're able to have that voice, express their opinions, and uh, you know, discuss the experiences that they've had in their lives. So I also um, collaborated with a group of graffiti artists, local graffiti artists from Nairobi. This guy is named Bank Slave, which I think is a pretty cool name for an artist. Um, and we decided to paint an entire train 
with messages of, of peace. This train is a passenger train that goes through um, all over Nairobi, including this community of Kibera, but also many others. This is something that's so important to involve local artists and have them be able to continue this type of work after you leave if you are, are someone who's an outsider. I work with um, a lot of different kids here, but one of my main focuses is youth who are incarcerated or have recently got out and are on probation. Um, so I, this one here uh, is from a big series in Baltimore, and the kids did their own personal painting. And the idea really is to have the youth create art and have exhibitions of their work. Not just do art, but have exhibitions so people can come and hear their voice. It's a way for people to really connect with other people who they might not usually connect with. The theme of this mural was um, the violence in the neighborhood and how young people can be an agent for change and for peace in the neighborhood. And so we had a lot of workshops that, um, that explored that. This kid was locked up for tagging and doing graffiti. Um, so he got to jump on the wall with some spray cans and do a legal section of the mural with some, some of his letters. So now we're going to go to Brazil, and this is a project that, um, I've done a couple different projects in Brazil, it's the place I've worked the most, um, and so one thing I did is I worked with street children, and these are kids that are either homeless or out on the street most of the day because their home situation is so um, chaotic and difficult. The reason why this is so important is because these are kids who are invisible in society, and when they are seen, they're just simply seen as being on drugs, um, thieves, and violent, and that's it. So through the arts, what they're able to do with this project is show everybody in society, hey, this is who I really am. These are my feelings, these are my dreams for the future, um, these are my thoughts, I'm, I'm a human being, this is me. And along the way, they're gonna learn a lot of different skills, and they're going to form relationships with, with adults that are going to be positive relationships, which is something they've been lacking in their lives. And that's fundamental to changing their lives.